Okay. Um, hi. I haven't made a video for about eight months. So, um, we're gonna get into it. But before I do, um, I just wanted to say that right now I'm filming this in a time where there's a lot of things going on politically when it has to do with like black lives and the police and racism. Um, I hope you guys are educating yourselves. If you want like resources, I will link things below to, sorry, I'm looking at a comment. I will link things below because the fight is not over. It's only been a week. Things in the past have gone on for months. So I just really hope you guys don't treat this as a trend. Like, cause it's not lives. Um, now that I made that little disclaimer, also sorry if you can hear the people outside um, doing the lawn, but today's video is gonna be about finances in college. Um, oh God. Well, I'll just speak louder for now. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, we're gonna talk about finances during college. I have my laptop. Um, I have like a list of things to follow so that this video isn't an hour, like some of my videos are. Um, so we're gonna go over the cost breakdown of my past two years at SAIC. I'm still in SAIC, I'm, I'm gonna be a junior this year. Um, and then we're going to go over loan and scholarship breakdown, applying for scholarships, and my frustrations with that. Um, things I wish SAIC did, things I'm doing now to prep me for graduating in two years because it's coming fast. And, hmm, yeah, the loans. Um, yeah, so let's get into the cost breakdown of my past two years. I'm going to, um put on the screen my little document that I made that has all of my SAIC bills um, from my freshman year. What they, how they break it up, well, I'll probably be like putting it on the screen by now, but just in case I'm not, I'll be, SAIC um, like shows your bills like this. Like even though I've only been there for two years, these are all in my bills. For some reason they break it up so weirdly and they send you multiple bills for like the same semester, but just like with different things. Um, so the ones I compiled have to do with just like the main, not even the main, all of the funds that I pay for, well not me, my loans, um, that is being paid for for the semester. Um, I guess the different bills are broken up because like sometimes things change like with your classes, like um, sometimes like if you're only enrolled for a few classes and you're on, like you're waitlisted for one, this is what happened to me, you're waitlisted for one, um, your bill doesn't really reflect all of the classes you're enrolled in, so then it gets updated. Um, so I guess that's like maybe why they do it. Besides the point, we're gonna start with fall 2018. Um, you can see that I highlighted things in green, red, and yellow. The things I didn't highlight were the things that I didn't pay for or like or just things that like don't really have anything to do with this video um so the green has to do with like school costs so like tuition um meal plan room charge a lot of people have been asking me how much things have been costing when it comes to dorms and when it comes to rooms or meal plans too when you're a freshman your meal plan is 800 per semester so that's what you're paying for um and that's why like they always say your freshman year is like a, normally like a little bit more expensive mm, depends on like what you do for the rest of your three years but mm, i think i think there are more fees as a freshman so like i was saying uh your meal plan is 800 dollars. your room charge well mine i had a double in the 162 that cost me six thousand one hundred and fifty dollars you get a u pass like the CTA um, Venture Pass, um, that's 155 I think that's per semester. And then you have your Venture Card fee if you're like a new student, like your freshman year, you get the card and you have to pay the card fee. The health insurance cost, um, I already have health insurance with my parents. So 
um, we just did the health insurance waiver. That's why it says CR, where it says health insurance waiver. Um, so we got that money back. We didn't have to pay for that. Which if you do have insurance that like the school thinks um, like qualifies or like is equal to theirs, I would do that. Because a thousand dollars may not seem like a lot, but it is. Any money is a lot, in all honesty. So now we're gonna get into the loans of my fall 2018 year. Um, I have a Parent PLUS loan, I have subsidized staffer loans, and I have unsubsidized staffer loans. So my Parent PLUS for the fall 2018 semester was $21,062. My um, subsidized loan was $1,732, unsubsidized $990. Um, and then you can see that my scholarship was applied and I got 9,000 for that. So that's what the yellow is, that those are my scholarships. And then refund check, that doesn't go to me, that goes to my parent. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I just feel like it's really good to show you guys what like the actual bills look like because I don't think, I don't think they're available for people to see. Um, and I think it just really puts things into perspective of like your costs. I'm a really big budgeter and planner, um, especially since I have so many loans. Right now I have, in total, all of my loans, I have about like 106,000 something loans. Yeah. So, got to keep track of them. So now we move on to spring 2019. You see that they kind of move things around, but I still kept the highlighting the same. Um, the Parent PLUS loan was similar to the fall 2018 semester. Same with the Stafford and the, same with the subsidized and the unsubsidized. And then same with my um, scholarship. Refund check again, didn't get. Um, UPass fee again is applied. Health insurance waiver. Oh yeah, that's the other thing about the health insurance waiver. You need to do that every semester. Um, if you already have insurance, like you have to fill that out every semester. And then you can see again, my room charge fee, um, meal plan. They also charge you a technology fee every year. And then my tuition. Um, so yeah, that's 2019. I'm just gonna try to go through this quite quickly so that we can talk about other points. Um, fall 2019, so this was my past sophomore year, your meal plan goes down after your first year in college or like at SAIC. Even if you're like a transfer student, I believe you still get 800. As long as it's your first year at SAIC and like your first year in the dorms, I think you still get 800. But um, after that, it goes down to 560. So that's why you see my meal plan charge is 560 because I'm still living in the dorms. Um, my sophomore year, and I think for the rest of my college career, I had a single, and I think I'm going to continue to still have a single. That was about two grand more. So um, the single that I got cost me 8,500. And then again, UPass fee, health insurance we talked about, technology fee we talked about, tuition is $24,990. Um, and then you can see all of my loans. I got a few more scholarships um, my sophomore year because I appealed to the school because I felt like they didn't give me enough money. Um, because in total, when I got my acceptance letter, it said that I received 75600 in scholarships. However, like you think that sounds fantastic and it really is, honestly, any money, any free money is amazing. Um, but when you put it into perspective of how much SAIC actually costs, that kind of maybe covers like one year in full if you were like thinking about it like that but they don't give it to you like that they split it up um for every semester that you're at saac um i think your first two years it remains eighteen thousand for like the whole year so it gets split up into nine and then your last two years you get a little bit more um yeah so you can see i have the leroy neiman scholarship because i appealed i believe and then it was either because I appealed or my SAC support grant was because I appealed. One of them I got from appealing, or maybe both of them. Um, but I would recommend that if you feel like the school didn't give you more money or like enough money to appeal. Um, let's see. And then my spring 2020, <laughs> this past semester with COVID, um, there are a lot of other things on here because of COVID. Um, because we had to move out of the dorms early, so, so there are certain refunds on here that um, won't be on a normal bill like description. Um, so you can see my loans again, my tuition, 
scholarships. The room credit was um, because we had to move out early, so that's what they gave us back. That went to my parents. Um, E-refund, pretty sure that went to my parents because I did not see $4,000 in my checking account. Um, room charge, the same. Meal plan, the same. CTA, same. So on and so on. Um, so that's, those are all of my bills for SAIC. And yeah, um, next I want to talk about, let's see, my loans. So I think I already broke down the scholarships enough. Um, however, I do have frustrations with scholarships just because, I don't know, I've applied to a lot and I haven't gotten any besides when I've appealed to SAIC, but I, I mean, I count them, but like, they're not outside scholarships that I've received. Um, so even though I've applied to outside scholarships, I have never gotten one. And I also don't, I don't qualify for um, like federal grants because to the government, my parents make enough money to cover my college. But even though they do make a decent amount of money, um, paycheck wise, they also have hefty loans and hefty debt. And I have a two-year-old brother that's about to be three next Monday. Um, so there's just, they have a lot of costs that don't allow them to help me like how the government thinks they can help me. And I really think they should fix that because like, just because someone, it looks like someone is getting paid this amount doesn't mean that they don't have other things that they need to pay for. So not giving someone a grant for schools kind of, I don't know, it's um, frustrating. So next you're gonna see on the screen my finances as of June 11th, which was like yesterday. Um, these, I'm keeping track of all of my loans for every year. So you can see I broke them down into subsidized, unsubsidized, um, parent plus, and then I have my scholarships at the bottom that I've received so far for all of my two years. Um, I'm pretty sure I've explained subsidized and unsubsidized in my past videos, but just to like do like a quick refresher, subsidized means that you do not, like your interest doesn't start until you graduate. So that's why if you look, it says zero interest accrued because it's um, on pause until I graduate school. Unsubsidized, you still have interest accruing while you're in school. So that's why you can see I have um, different amounts of money for like the different years. So of course my first, um, loan is going to be more because it's accrued, it's had more time to accrue in interest. My parent plus loans, <laughs> they started off, I know like when I explained my bills per semester, you were seeing them in like 20,000, 20,000, but these are them in the total amount, um, for the whole year. So you can see my first year was 44,000. Interest rate, I'm still figuring that out. I forgot, like I can't find it in the documents, but I'm still looking. I think they can't show it right now because because of COVID, they put a pause on all of the interest so that like your loan doesn't grow for now. Um, so I can't find the interest rate for that one, but the interest rate for my sophomore year is 7%. And you can see that that amount is $45,004. Interest accrued, it's already been a lot. <laughs> so you can see that my current total, even though my original loan was $44,000, $44, um, now it's at $48,518.19. And then my second year it was $46,133.70. Um, the thing about uh, Parent PLUS loans is that they have different payment, um, like pay repayment like forms or like methods. Um, they're saying that they estimate that if I take 10 years to pay it off, I'm actually gonna be paying 82,000, is this still recording? Yeah, $82,398 and then 79,762. That's if I take 10 years to repay it, which in my mind is insane because that's like doubling my loans for one year. Um, and then I did the math and it would be like, because I have like about 106 now, um, and then double that, and then add interest on top of that, that's gonna be close to like 400 grand if I take um, 10 years to pay off my loans. So 
I'm trying to get a handle on that and I'm trying to come up with like a savings plan and um, make sure it doesn't take that long because I really don't want to give these loan people and like Mohila's like the people that manage my loans I don't want to give them Mohila, Mohila, Mohila and Navient they're the ones that manage my loans and I'm not trying to give them 400 grand that's two houses in Florida which is where I'm from by the way um so mm -mm, mm -mm, can't happen the other thing that's really important to remember is that you have different repayment dates so my repayment start date for my subsidized and unsubsidized loans um, is November 16th, 2022. Um, you can see that with my Parent PLUS loans, you can actually start paying those off now. You can start paying off any loan now, to be honest, but um, when it comes to like the federal ones, there, it's just like a grace period. Like you don't need to start until you graduate. Same, you don't have to technically start with the Parent PLUS loan until you graduate because you have a deferment until you graduate. But if you can afford to pay them now, I think it would be smart to. Um, I was asking one of my parents, like, if I should start paying off my interest that's accrued so far. And they said that they honestly wouldn't and they would just wait until I graduate. Um, but I think that's specific to me because I have a lot of savings goals that I'm trying to um, accomplish in the next two years. So, like, for instance... I'm trying to save um, 9,000 because I'm trying to go to London next year for a program. And then I'm also trying to save 10,000 so that, like by the time I graduate, so that I can have enough money to move, whether it be to New York or to Europe. Um, and then I'm also trying to save 5,000 so that I can get, like that's, that's gonna be like my pool of um, money that like I used to repay my loans with. I mean, of course it's not just gonna be 5,000, but I want it to start at 5,000 so that way I have like some kind of like playing field so that I'm not graduating with no money and no money to, like to be ready to start making payments on my loans. Um, because I think like if I wait too long, I'm just gonna be like suffocating. Um, so yes, that's my plan. And then if you go down to the scholarships, you can see all the scholarships that I've gotten so far from SAIC. Um, Leroy Neiman is SAIC. Um, and then they've all totaled to $40,080. So yeah, that's those are my finances. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should mention when it comes to loans. I guess um, I would just be really cautious as to like keeping track of your loans and not ignoring them. I mean, I know like it feels a little bit better to not look at them um, because if I'm gonna be honest, every time I would get mail from Mohela, Mohila, um, like the loan service, I thought, I, I would get emails from them too. I didn't know that they were the people that had my federal loans. So I would just like delete the emails because I'm like, why are you guys trying to get me to like get more loans for school? I already have loans. And then my um, parent was like, Iomi, <laughs> they're who manages your loans. And those are all of your statements for your loans. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So I think it was like two days ago, I logged in to my Mohila account or like I made one cause I didn't even, I didn't even have one. So I made it and then I looked at all of my loans. I looked at all the interest accruing. So that in itself really like kind of jolted me into taking more account um, to like the money that I'm borrowing. Um, just because I'm just, I'm not a fan of loans. I don't enjoy them. I don't really think anyone does. I don't like owing someone money. Um, but my parents told me a while ago that the school is probably the best thing to have a loan for. So and if I believe I'm gonna be successful, which I am because we're not even gonna go into, oh, maybe not, because it's mm -mm, no doubts. No doubts are in my mind. They can't be. Um, so I guess like long tangent short, just try to keep track of your loans, um, keep track of the interest accruing. The thing with applying for scholarships, I think like, everyone should be applying for scholarships. I'm still applying for scholarships, even though I am a little saddened by not receiving anything ever um like outside of school but 
it's definitely something that people should take more advantage of. SCIC also has a portal for their own scholarships and I just applied to all of my recommended ones like yesterday or the day, or the day before um, just because like why not if you don't get it at least you tried um, keep going for it like I feel like people make it seem like getting scholarships are so easy but in reality not always but yes there are some of some scholarships where like not a lot of people know about them so it's not a lot of people applying and you have more of a chance but I don't know I feel like nowadays a lot of people have access to all of the scholarships or like at least a good amount of the scholarships out there um like because of the scholarship websites and stuff like that but yeah that's my spiel on um applying for scholarships the things I wish SAIC would do I would say oh wait I didn't even like introduce that tangent okay we're going into it, my next topic <laughs> which is things I wish SEIC would do for their students. Um, while I love the school and I love the program that I'm in and I love um, just like the things I've learned so far, I feel like SEIC could do a lot better when it comes to giving money out. Like I know they give a lot of people scholarships when they apply, um, but I just feel like making more opportunities readily available and giving out more full rides because they do give out full rides, but from my understanding, it's only if you are from Chicago or like if you live in Chicago um, and maybe like if you've gone to like one of their summer programs. Um, so like if you're out of state or if you're international, you can't get a full ride. And I don't know, I don't think that's fair. I think for a school that makes millions of dollars from tuition and just like beneficiaries, bene benefic beneficiaries, you know what I'm trying to say. I just feel like they could do a little bit better, especially like now with the political climate, they tried asking like some black fashion students to show their work and like, I don't know, that's just like a whole thing on itself. I can link a friend um, who they emailed and like his response video to it. If you want to look at it, it's on Instagram, but I'll link it below. That explains it because I don't, I don't have time to go into that for this video. Um, yeah, I just, I just wish they did a little bit better when it came to money. I mean, that's just one thing they could do a little bit better on. But, because since we're just talking about money, let's just stick to money. Because um, there are some, some tea with SAIC. But, let's keep it going. Um, the things I'm doing right now to prep me for graduating is our next topic. Um, so, as you can tell from the video, one of the things I'm really doing is keeping track of my finances. How I'm doing that at the moment is using Mint. I'll try to put something on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm so new to like doing that in editing. Yeah, so I'm keeping track of my finances using Mint. It's like a really good tool so you can link all of your bank accounts, you can link your credit card, you can link your loans, you can link um, different bills like Netflix or just anything, honestly, any type of bill. You can also build like savings goals you can it's just like a really good way to keep track of um like your finances and it shows you your spending habits it shows you like things that you've been doing over time how things have changed um I really think like a lot of college students don't really do that as much as they should um maybe because like it sounds boring but I just feel like as like a group of people that don't really make that much money I mean, not saying you don't, I don't know you, but like generally college students don't make a lot of money. And I feel like we should keep track of it a little bit better since we don't have that much. So I don't know, I would suggest if you're watching this um, to keep track of your finances in some way, even if it's not using Mint, whatever way works for you, because finances are a very personal thing, even though like I see all these templates and things like that they don't really work for me um i like making my own things and i also like using mint because it's just um it's like a different kind of template because it's calculations and stuff like that and it's like an actual program um the other thing i'm doing is having multiple savings accounts right now i would say i have one two three four five six seven eight ten but that's <laughs> That sounds a, that's a lot but that's between two different um bank accounts like i have a capital one account and i have a wings financial account 
for right now. Um, and then in Capital One, I have one that's like saving for my New York move, saving for um, my London trip, saving for emergencies are in my wings financial, but like it just um, varies for like the thing that I'm trying to save for it because I like to have my money split up so that I know what it's going to because I feel like if it's all in a lump sum, I won't keep track of it as well. Although there are benefits when you keep things in a lump sum because the reason why I have like a more like the reason why I use my Capital One savings accounts more than my Wings is because Capital One, um, with their 360 checking, they give you an interest rate of like 1.5, and my Wings gives me an interest rate of 0 0.05. <laughs> so that's not a lot. Um, so like if you keep like a good amount of money in your savings account, you'll get an interest like return. I think it's either every month or every couple months, like every um like financial cycle like according to the bank you get interest on the money that's in it so it's like your money is making money for you so i just feel like mm, if you're saving you should choose a checking a savings account that works really well for you and that has a good interest rate i would definitely recommend the capital one 360 savings because you can open it with no money um even if you hit zero they won't close it for a while um and just their interest rate is fantastic. And I really like Capital One's customer service. They're great. Anytime I have a problem, you just call. They're nice. They handle it instantly. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend savings accounts, plural, if it works for you. If you feel like having more of like a lump sum of money in, a, in one savings account is better for you because it'll give you more of like a return on like your interest, do what works for you. The other thing I'm doing this is just this just happened like two days ago i applied for my first credit card um because i'm actually going to new york next week for two months for an internship um and i'm trying to build my credit because there are a lot of things that i'm trying to do um one in the next year and then like for the rest of my life honestly but i just felt like i was gonna wait until my 20 20th birthday in august but i just felt like um if I get it now for this trip, the, the card I got was the Discover It student card and they give you really, really good cash back percentage. Like if you use it for groceries and things like that, you get 5% cash back and then like everything else. I mean, it's more than just groceries. Like you can look at it online. Just go to Discover It student card. Um, it, sh it breaks it up for you. But like, even if like it, one of them, even if one of your things that you're spending your card with doesn't like fall into those categories you can still get one percent cash back on anything um and then the other good thing that i liked about it was in your first year they'll match all of your cash back from that first year and you also get good grade rewards like you get twenty dollars every year of like good grades like you have to have a, a 3.0 or higher but the cool thing about saic is it's a pass fail so as long as you pass <laughs> All of your classes you have a 4.0 like technically um so yeah i would definitely can like i would definitely think about getting a credit card i wouldn't get one like if you're watching this i wouldn't get one if you are gonna treat it like it's not your money because i think that's where a lot of people go wrong like my friend was just telling me how when he got his first one he got um like a credit limit of a thousand which was crazy to me because I only got 500 but yeah he got a thousand and in his first week he maxed it instantly because a lot of people just think about it as like oh I have extra money it's not mine I can spend it but in reality like it's it's it can really hurt your credit score if you max out your card I can I'll probably honestly do like a whole other video um when it comes to like things I've learned about credit cards um, just because my parents have told me a lot of good things and I just feel like if I mention it in this video this is going to be like an hour long video because we're still not even done <laughs> um, but yeah I guess that's like my one tip I'll give for now is just don't treat it like it's not your money because you have to repay it and if you don't repay it by the end of the month there's going to be interest on it and then it's just going to keep building and building and building and then you're going to have hundreds 
thousands of dollars in credit card debt. So even though I'm recommending to get a credit card, don't don't get it if you're not um, like, I don't want to say responsible, but in all honesty, that is kind of what I mean. Because it is a big responsibility. You can't just treat it like it's nothing because this is something that affects you for the rest of your life. And I'm sure like maybe like a lot of you watching and your parents have been like, credit cards are bad. Credit cards are evil. Um, Because that's kind of like what my parents were like. But if you think of it as like a tool, you can you can get some pretty good things out of it. Um, yeah. Especially because there are different credit cards for different like areas of your life, like travel and things like that. Moving on. Um, the other thing that I'm doing, well, that I've been doing, I ha I got um, a Roth IRA account um, last year um, just so I can start saving for retirement. I know it sounds a little crazy because I'm 19, turning 20. Don't want to be called a 19 year old, even though I am. Besides the point. Um, the reason I started it was mainly because of um, my stepdad um, and we've just been listening to like a lot of podcasts and we've seen a lot of things that talk about how the earlier you start your retirement fund or even just any savings fund, like whether it's emergency retirement, anything that like, you're putting away money for, like the earlier you start, the better. So like the Roth IRA account that I have what it does is like you put money in and then like i believe it like buys different like stocks and different um things so that your money is making money for you um and that your money is working for you so it's not like you're just putting in money and it just sits there it doesn't grow like it's consistently growing of course it goes up and down because the stock market goes up and down but the earlier you start you can make it um be like a higher risk because you're younger you have more time Versus if you started this when you were like 40, you don't have that much time. So you can't be such a high risk, like Roth IRA account person. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, I would definitely look it up. I use Fidelity. I like Fidelity. It's really nice, um, easy to understand. They give you like cool readings if you want to understand more about different things. Yeah. That's what I recommend. So that's the end of my video. <laughs> Not bad on time. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything, whether it's about SAIC or finances, or if you just want to talk about things, DM me. I know a lot of you already do, which is really nice. I love talking to you guys. Um, yeah, but thanks for watching. I hope I helped answer some questions about like when it comes to costs for SAIC. I hope I gave you good tips or like tips that you found useful. Um, yeah, I'm going to make another video in a minute. So bye. Thanks for watching. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.